All right, it is time for the Italian Grand Prix observations. Uh, we got a predictable outcome, although it was very interesting how we got to that outcome. Uh, we had an example of following procedures and we had a stellar debut from Nick De Vries. I suppose I'll start off with De Vries. Uh, so Albon, he's missed um, the Grand Prix due to getting appendicitis. <laughs> I suppose he might have been worried that uh, Latifi was going to score some points at the Grand Prix because I, I suppose he would have been expecting the car to be good at the Monza circuit due to how um, due to how the car performed at, at Belgium. Mind you, the Williams in general has been a very surprise package after the technical directors have come in. Very, been very interesting to, to see how this car has developed. I suppose Mercedes are taking notes anyway. <laughs> anyway, Albon missed the Grand Prix. He had appendicitis. He's had his appendix removed. Uh, there were there was some uh, complication. So who knows if he'll be out for Singapore? I don't think he will be. <laughs> I don't think he will be. But uh, anything is uh, anything is possible. They might just give him uh, the, 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 the weeks. An extra week's recovery and the freeze will get to drive at Singapore for all we know. But otherwise, the <laughs> freeze stepped in. He had some some track time on Friday with uh, Tracing Martin. Still wasn't race fit, mind you. That <laughs> he, he learned that at the end of the Grand Prix. But otherwise, he got called into the Williams seat. On Saturday, and well, he yeah, out qualified Latifi straight away. Straight away. <laughs> and the heat's gonna be turned up on Latifi now, you best believe, because, um, well, it's, it can't be hidden anymore. That he's just, um, yeah, he's just ridiculously slow. You see, it's not the case that you see, Latifi is the perfect example for. Uh, you know, not any driver can win in the best car because he can't even score points in a car that looks ready to score points at some select Grand Prix. You, you can't muster that out of the car. So where exactly uh, would he be winning Grand Prix in a car that was capable of winning Grand Prix? Wouldn't be happening. It simply wouldn't be happening. So now, Williams, they've got some decisions to make. Because either, <laughs> either De Vries has had a, a really lucky debut, or that's what the car is actually capable of, or he's just that good. Right? It's one of the, it's one of the three. <laughs> it's one of the three, right? And for Latifi, well, either he he's he's under underperforming in the car. You can't even deliver on. On, on, on the car's performance envelope <laughs> so so he's got to, he's got to leave and you, you can't even drive the car to its maximum delta so you, you could do this thing as a as a hobbyist if you bring that much money to the table I suppose for the seat but otherwise unless you bring more money than the possible points that are on offer you're gonna be you're gonna be gotten rid of. There's a lot of hot talents in this in this Formula Two. Today. <laughs> there's a lot. There's many hot talents. I should actually watch this thing more closely, but no, I don't know. No, it's 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 too much time commitment for for what the space has become. Quite frankly, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, just unfortunate the way it falls. But yeah, there's some there's some crazy talents in F2. You know, some of them have been barred outright from the sport now, but it is what it is. <laughs> There's some crazy time. I mean, essentially, fun functionally, the Vips is barred from F1. It will be very interesting to see which, which team, if ever there is a team, that is going to take a risk on him. Maybe Haas? Who knows? I suppose Ricardo will uh, tone down his contract demands when it becomes apparent that no one's looking to sign him. Here is the, uh, I mean, Latifi is another young driver, but the, the, the point being made is that this is the, <laughs> this is the whole issue with um, the whole talent pipeline and how it functions, right? Is that you're not going to have 
these filler drivers that stay in the sport. Latifi, this might be his last season in F1. I'll be surprised if he's able to stay in a seat somewhere. I'll be very surprised if that happens. I mean, he would have to pull something crazy out the bags and <laughs> at the back end of the season. I mean, that, that whatever he did at the at the British Grand Prix in qualifying, getting into Q3, that that, that 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 doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. There were no points on Sunday, right? No one's gonna remember the amazing qualifying performance if it's not matched with uh, some sort of results on the Sunday, right? Even Nico Hulkenberg demonstrates that perfectly. He did some wonders in qualifying, Nico Hulkenberg, but well, he couldn't couldn't finalize a Grand Prix win, was really unlucky in some podiums, missed out on some podiums, and he's, he's not, I mean, he's, he's a good substitute driver. All right, so Albon, I mean, I suppose he would have been a little bit worried that, well, Latifi might score some points at this Italian Grand Prix, it should be, should be doable, almost easy, in the Williams to at least <laughs> get into the top 10. And well, it didn't happen for Latifi at all. This guy, this guy. Well, we'll see just how much Latifi is worth. <laughs> Whether his services are retained or not somewhere this season. We'll see just how much he's actually worth. But otherwise, DeFries has had a stellar debut. He might get to race again in Singapore. Best of luck to him, I, I, I imagine he'll find a seat very easily. Otherwise, how are Williams doing after the technical directives have landed? They, they, their car, after they went to a... It's funny, people try to say it's not as simple as um, whether you've got wide side pods or slim side pods. But really, Williams went from slim side pods to wide side pods. And look at the gains they've made. <laughs> Look at the gains they've made just by going with a uh, an approach that's well that that has analogs across the grid that you can actually reference and get a, 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 a basic understanding of what exactly <laughs> the platform is doing when under stress, when under load. Uh, Mercedes don't have a reference; they only have themselves, and well, they only get to learn from their own mistakes and. <laughs> and triumphs so, so otherwise Williams they went with a wide side pod design and well look at them after these technical directives have landed they haven't had to alter all that much about their car <laughs> and uh, it, it, it'll be very interesting I mean they were even pretty serviceable at Sanford so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they do for the rest of the season I think they'll have a strong Grand Prix at it in Mexico. Otherwise, we can only see what happens when we get there. <laughs> very, very positive developments for Williams, especially if they manage to sign De Vries. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe they actually get the contract, <laughs> get it inked. Anyway, anyway, great debut from De Vries. He was so tired. At the end of three, he couldn't even get himself out of the car, by the way. <laughs> it was going to be hilarious if the Park Ferme rules um, didn't allow for uh, team personnel to come and assist him out of the, out of the car. It was going to be hilarious. Because <laughs> he was going to have to stay in the car until he recovered enough to actually pull himself out. He couldn't, couldn't, he really couldn't get out of the car. And I appreciated that. Right, because I mean, we, it's very easy to forget just how physical the sport is when, like, all the drivers are so 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 like, they're just so fine-tuned <laughs> for the environment. Right, it's very easy to forget just how physically demanding the sport is. And what De Vries <laughs> being unable to pull himself out of the car in a short notice debut, well. Yeah, I appreciated that. It would have been, I suppose, that's a, that's a safety hazard. I mean, if if, if he crashed <laughs> somewhere at the end of the Grand Prix, and his, his arms were so dead that he couldn't climb out the car, that uh, that might have been a problem. But it, likewise, one could assume he would have had enough adrenaline uh, going through his system to 
to make anything possible. So, I mean, finish the Grand Prix distance. I mean, that was, I can, we, we can safely assume a lot of that was on adrenaline <laughs> alone. He, he himself said he's, he's not race fit. <laughs> so, so, you know, very good debut from him. Will be in, in, will, will be very interesting to see what he, what he does when he is race fit. Right. Likewise, if he gets gets a second uh, <laughs> a second dip in the pool that at Singapore, a full circuit anyway. All right. Small little note here: commentary and drivers have not taken note of what the wheel archers do. Right. I don't even know the technical guys have done that. I don't know why they haven't. I wish they I wish they would. I don't know what the fuck they do. Braun should make an infographic for all of us because <laughs> we're all stumped on it. Anyway. Anyway, so when these things, you know, when, when I say, you know, like everyone's seen it or something, it's on the screen, but you're not, not exactly putting the eyes there. So when these cars are following, right, these wheel arches, they they how, how do i say this they they correct the airflow going over the tires and and that's the airflow that's coming off of uh, the car in front of course it's disturbed airflow so i'm not entirely sure what mechanic those wheel arches use to do so but when they're working <laughs> they flap right alonso's did get damaged in belgium on that lap one incident with Sir Lewis Hamilton. Alonso's what left wheel flap wheel arch, it, it did get damaged. So that one was uh, flapping even when not following another car closely. Although it's 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 it's, it's a strange um, it's a strange phenomenon, those wheel arches flapping because it's not actually consistent across cars. One, it's not consistent across different cars. Two, it's not consistent depending which cars one is following, and it's not consistent on different circuits, right? It seems to, they seem to be more active at, yeah, they seem to be more active at low speed circuits or high downforce circuits, which would make sense, I suppose. But I suppose they are also getting active in Monza just because of the high speed nature of um, of the circuit. Otherwise, it's very interesting commentary and the drivers haven't seen these things flapping when when cars are following each other just yet. But I suppose it's not a regular phenomenon. So it's not, it's not like it's happening all the time because <laughs> otherwise I suppose everyone would have seen it by now. Anyway, all right, so when the Grand Prix stopped, when the lights went out, all right, when the lights went out, um, Norris had a poor start. I was really, <laughs> I was actually expecting Ricardo to finish ahead of him. And by hook or by crook, I don't know, McLaren might have ran a, a more aggressive strategy for, for Norris. Grand Prix is not really that interesting on rewatch, but. <laughs> But whatever they they ran Lando a bit longer, a bit longer. I say they ran him substantially longer. But they ran a different strategy for Norris, and well, he came out ahead at the end of the day. And I would not have bet on that with the way they. Well, I would have bet on it, but I wouldn't have been comfortable betting on that because I really would have expected Ricardo to have pulled out, you know, one last hurrah. Uh, going to Monza and all the chips fell right for him at the start I suppose we could put out stories that McLaren uh, weren't running optimum strategy for him they were asking him to um, to try and hold up Pierre Gasly <laughs> so that Norris could get ahead so I suppose Norris is not, not Norris I suppose Ricardo is uh, maybe even demonstrating his more team-centric gears <laughs> to any potential buyers. But yeah, I was pretty disappointed that that Ricardo didn't actually manage to finish ahead of Norris. I was, I was pretty disappointed with that. Didn't expect to be this disappointed with it, but yeah, yeah, I was. I was pretty disappointed. I actually expected him to just do much better <laughs> than Ricardo. 
just expected them to finish ahead of Norris by hook or by crook at Monza. But oh well. I mean, this is no different to anything else that's been reported this season by me. <laughs> Norris, Norris is just, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's just this much better a driver than Daniel Ricciardo. I mean, Ricciardo should just simmer down on his contract demand, as far as I'm concerned. Just simmer down on how much money you want. You've, you've made your bank. If you want to stay in the sport, you're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to, have to make some sacrifices. Because you can't do it like you used to with some of the young hotshots that are now on the grid, especially the, the guy that's in the other seat across the garage from you. You just can't do it like you used to. I don't know, maybe the money softened you, but otherwise. <laughs> otherwise, these young hotshots coming on the grid, you can't beat that fresh-faced ambition with this, uh, with this half-hearted shtick. And what other teams are taking note. Right? Any potential buyers they are taking note if <laughs> if they play it with the understanding that uh, Ricardo was running to beat Norris, then well, this is uh, this is not a good reflection. But otherwise, McLaren they've they they're another team that these technical directives have really favoured, and they're another team that also well, I mean they had to. Well, they had to bring unity to their their aero concept, quite frankly. I forget which video, it might have been a B-Sport video, I suppose, but their aero package, before they brought their their aero revision, um, well, their whole package revision for, for Paul Ricard, um, McLaren's package was um, incongruent with itself. It's like they pieced together different Legos from different packs that, that aren't the same, right? It's not <laughs> Just to make a shape, oh, it looks like an F1 car, but you know, the, the concept's not really congruent with itself, so they corrected that, and then these technical directives came in on top of that, and well, they seem to be doing really well um, in the new environment that these TDs have uh, forced on forced on the teams. So the TDs are doing all sorts of things all over the grid. The other teams are losing out, like a Tracing Martin. Mind you, a Tracing Martin seems to be a bit of a yo-yo team right now, but otherwise, otherwise I'll get to them later. But yeah, Norris, I'm convinced on I've been convinced on Norris since the start of the season. I suppose next season, when he's against Piastri, and Piastri possibly lights him up. And, you know, internet's gonna go crazy. Oh, told all of you Norris one shit. Yada yada yada. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Either way, right, regardless of whosoever wins the battle of the fates at McLaren next season, right, that's just, that'll just be a marker for what the baseline of talent is for the future generation of uh, F1. So, it's no skin off anyone's back. <laughs> everyone wins. Well, almost everyone. Well, I'm not gonna get into that. All right, Ferrari at Monza. Hmm. The Tifosi were throwing um, a bit of red meat on Friday and Saturday with uh, Ferraris being top of the timesheet even after qualifying even with penalties <laughs> even before penalties were applied so again too many engine penalties anyway I've already spoken on the engine penalties but yeah the Tifosi were handed a bit of red meat so you know <laughs> I didn't change my forecast going into the Grand Prix of, uh, of a Maximilian Verstappen cakewalk I suppose a lot of the Tifosi might have done so, but it's very irresponsible to do that. Ferrari are just, they just, they went yellow. Oh no, no, they didn't paint the cars yellow. Thank goodness, someone's gonna say those are the house colors. <laughs> you know, the last time, or at least the last time that I've noted, it might, it might have been a more recent time, but the last time Ferrari ran 
the yellow livery. It wasn't a protest. They don't put yellow in the car. <laughs> they don't put yellow in the car to, you know, to show up for the home crowd or something. It's in protest. They were, the last time they did it, early 50s, I believe, they were denying F1 the right of having the red Ferrari on, on, on the grid. They were denying it. They were like, you're going to have yellow Ferraris. Right? I, I forget what exactly they were going to war about. <laughs> you can do your own research there. But otherwise, the yellow livery, I put the yellow, the yellow overalls on the driver. Yellow helmets, yellow stripe on the car. Is it a yellow fin? What, what do you want to call it? No, absolutely do not do that. I, I wish they had done the 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 maroon scheme that they ran. What was that at Portimao? Well, I wish they ran that scheme. That was that was a <laughs> that scheme was popping. That livery was popping, popping. Nah, they should have ran that. But they put the yellow on. Gave the Tafosi some red meat. And quite frankly, they they undercooked their own strategy. And the, the commentary has been kind to them by saying, oh well, they ran their strategy correctly and Red Bull were just faster. Well, no, not actually. At least not by my eye. They put, they put Charlie Littler too soon. They, just, they simply put him too soon. I don't know why they put him too soon. It wasn't worth it, right? They should have, if you were going to play that game, you should have forced Maximilian to pit at that time. If Red Bull were actually going to take, <laughs> to take the bait in that regard, Ferrari took the bait, right? Red Bull set out the bait like, oh, we might pit our driver if you don't pit. And they took the bait, it was too early to pit. And that under Charles Leclerc's Grand Prix from there on. It was, well, you see, <laughs> I suppose Ferrari, uh, commentary were commenting, commentary were commentating about how Ferrari are asking their drivers quote unquote question, right? The reason they're doing that, and I maintain this, is because they're trying to rebuild trust with their, with their drivers. Likewise, they're trying to get Leclerc out of his shell, but what they actually need on the pit wall is someone who is simply assertive in what strategy to run because they actually know what the best strategy to run is. That's what they actually need on that pit wall. All right? If they had that person there, then that first stop for the VSC, when, what was that, when, when Vettel retired, that would have been a dummy. They never ever would have been calling the driver in for real. They would have just been posting to see what Red Bull do. Bait Red Bull. Braun would have done that. Or who, who was that? Rory Byrne? On, on Ferrari strategy? Oh, they would have done that. That that prime Ferrari team run by Todd or Schumacher. They would have done that. I mean, heck, one time they, <laughs> the one time they left um, the pit crew standing out in Monaco for three laps when Eddie Irvine was deciding whether or not he would pit. <laughs> so he's having a debate with the pit wall. It is what it is. But I mean, they were actually built to, to handle those situations back then. This, this current Ferrari team, they're not actually built to handle... Uh, what? They're not built to handle a, a driver of Charles Leclerc's temperament. And science science he's not built to be the number one driver of ferrari it just is what it is <laughs> no ferrari wish that because science has the temperament for it so they wish that science had the pace to be the number one as well right but he doesn't he just doesn't but it is what it is maybe he unlocks it somewhere later on in his career i'm not putting money on it i wouldn't bet on it but maybe he does but otherwise, you have to take things as they are right now. And, you know, it's not like 
this is Sainz's debut season or his debut season was two seasons ago. He's, he's been here, right? Just like Maximilian, he's been here. <laughs> he didn't debut yesterday. De Vries, he debuted yesterday, right? So yeah, for Ferrari, they're in, they're in a bit of a pickle. And well, when they muck up Charlie Leclerc's strategy, what's their excuse going to be? Oh, but we asked you. Well, the driver is not going to really know everything that's going on in the Grand Prix, what the actual complexion of the race is, and whether it's actually a good idea to pit for tyres so early, late. Yeah, the driver will know, <laughs> right? If you're running the tyres late, but early. No, that's a different thing. That's on the team, and when you make that call as the team, you have to be dead accurate on that, and Ferrari simply weren't. Right? They simply were not. They're lucky that they had the raw pace to stay ahead of George Russell, quite frankly. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how suspect uh, their strategy was for Charles Leclerc. Science, different Grand Prix for him. He's is racing from the back with engine penalties Ferrari are perhaps more comfortable in that scenario because there's no real expectations there right get somewhere into the top six and you know it's, it's a job well done that's essentially what it is for the top three teams this season right you got some engine penalties don't worry you know finish somewhere top six end of the Grand Prix and it's a job well done if it's a circuit where overtaking is perhaps a little bit harder, then top eight, it's a job well done. And you're probably just unlucky if you get penalties at the street circuit. Well, that isn't Baku, right? <laughs> you're probably just unlucky. Right? If you get engine penalties at Monaco or Singapore, then what? It's probably just how the cookie crumbles. This has been... Uh, <laughs> You know, if the previous seasons with um, quote unquote depleted Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen were questionable, then well, I don't know what this season is. This is, this is a disaster season for Ferrari. An absolute disaster. Now, now the media, the Mockingbirds, they're all talking about Bonato getting fired. Talking about it now is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Only talking about it now in the season. That, that's crazy to me. But yeah, I suppose it will be very interesting to see what Ferrari actually do going forward. Because just on the raw optics, this, this Bernardo guy, if he's fundamental to the engine department, like I said after after the Hungarian Grand Prix, he's, he's got to get off the pit wall, put him back in the factory or something, put him away. <laughs> Put him away, put him in, in the garage or something like He can't be on the pit wall, he can't be team principal, but maybe Ferrari have seen something that, maybe Ferrari and Fiat, I should say, have seen something in Bonato that, that he has not shown me yet this season. <laughs> if there was a season for him to show it, he hasn't shown me it this season. I mean, real talk, this Bonato got, on what I've seen, he could never, ever, in his life go up against the team principals like Toto Wolf and Christian Horner in a, in a serious title challenge. I mean, Ferrari would have to come in with far and away the best car, like like one and a half seconds faster uh, from the jump at Bahrain. They'd have to come in with a car like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that ever happening. With this budget cap zero, I just don't see that happening. Many questions for Ferrari to answer. Not so many around the car, but I do have a question mark about the car. And that question mark is what well, how much how much development headroom? No, what there's a different way to, to phrase that. What's the ceiling of the car? Is the car at its ceiling? You know, this Ferrari car it feels like it has a very low ceiling for a concept. Right? The Mercedes also feels like a, a low ceiling concept and really a lot of that is based on what's happened with McLaren and Williams but otherwise all right so Perez's front right brake I believe it was caught fire no uh, they did they pull him in for an early pit stop because of some debris and 
in the in, in the wheel room or something. I, I have no idea. But they pulled Perez in for an early pit stop, and well, he got the fastest pit stop time during that pit stop, and, 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 and that makes it even more surprising that well, the brake caught fire. But yeah, his front right brake was on fire. I was very I was very impressed that they sent him back out, and just hopes that moving the brake bias backwards and and well just having him run run the thing out on circuit would would, would sort the fire out and <laughs> I'm very impressed that Red Bull actually did that very impressed why is that well because there's a lot of teams that would I mean that's really if you're gonna be frank about it that's really the, the easiest way to put out the brake fire just send the car out running and move the brake bias backwards so i'm really impressed that they did that a lot of teams would have probably bust out the fire extinguisher and retired the car and i'm likewise impressed that that front right brake finished the grand prix as far as it was a safety car so it didn't get tested all the way but and so then the vsc here and there you know i'm very impressed it actually finished the grand prix now verstappen's had a cakewalk of a grand prix here it's finished in the safety car. I don't really think much about the safety car. I'll get to the safety car later. <laughs> right after this, actually. But for Stappen, he's at a cakewalk Grand Prix. Yeah. I, I, I gather that there's a lot of um, consternation in, 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 in the uh, Black F1 YouTube space. So, oh, Maximilian, he's going to rewrite all the record books and all this. Right, guys, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Everybody stop. Stop, stop, stop. Take some observations away from the season. He's never actually... He, he hasn't beaten a car that's faster than his own car at some point this season, right? If you're, if you're going to be stacking Fangio numbers and upwards of championships, you, you kind of have to do that somewhere in the season. He hasn't done that. Some people might say that um, Perez is uh, placing behind... Well... The whole motley crew of of drivers that he's found himself around in regards to uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton, uh, Russell, Leclerc, Sainz and Verstappen. Some people might say that well there's Grand Prix where Perez is finishing behind um, all of these cars so so does Maximilian have the best car at these Grand Prix? Well here's the thing <laughs> the, the gap between the cars is not all that big Right. This has been something like a, a really important feature of the season, of the gap between these cars not being all that big. When there was enough time differential between the Red Bull and the likes of Mercedes and Ferrari, right? Perez could find himself in that gap between, well, between the cars, right? He could find himself in that gap. Now that the development race has has taken its twists and turns. <laughs> he's not he's not actually in contention. Belgium, Red Bull far and away had the fastest package, just because of an, an outlier piece of circuit that teams had to, um, well, that teams had their setups dictated to them around, right? The Eau Rouge that the Eau Rouge slash Radion, whatever, whatever people people get technical on corner names like anyone really gives a fuck right but Eau Rouge and the elevation change there right a lot of teams had their setups dictated to them by this piece of track Red Bull did not and this is why Perez has gotten the the results and optics that he's gotten at the Belgian Grand Prix doesn't fall that way at the other circuits if Perez was really about it he would have gotten into the top three in Monza and Undoubtedly, if it was really about it, it would have gotten into the top three at Sanford, undoubtedly. But he's failed to do so. Right? Now the differential between these cars isn't enough for him to just get ahead of the likes of the Mercedes pair and the Ferrari pair on car pace alone. Right? But this doesn't mean that Red Bull do not have the fastest car. Because no one's able to drive to drive near Maximilian Verstappen on race day. Right, even the Ferraris can't. I mean, <laughs> Leclerc, when he put on uh, 
his, his final set of tyres, he, he was supposed to be lapping a second faster than Verstappen to catch him. We can safely assume Verstappen has some, some pace, but whether he can descend the car around two tenths faster or half a second faster is irrelevant. He's got some pace in hand. So Leclerc gaining one tenth a lap on Verstappen at Monza. All right, it's irrelevant because Verstappen, if the gap starts coming under 10 seconds, he's going to turn the afterburners on and just, you know, calm the race down right there. Right? Like, all the best drivers have done this. Sir Lewis Hamilton has done this way. You know, someone might think, oh, I'm going to catch and challenge Sir Lewis Hamilton. And the afterburners get switched on and it's a different game. <laughs> and it's a different game, just idle where you are. And let's just finish the Grand Prix. That's, that's really how it works. So what's problematic for Perez is that he doesn't have the afterburners. Alright, forget about the afterburners. He doesn't even have <laughs> He doesn't even have the jet engine in there. So he, he's now at sea in these top three teams. Verstappen, he's cakewalking the Grand Prix. And Perez, if he was really about it, he would be getting ahead of both the Mercedes by the end of the Grand Prix. Right, and it was not gonna happen, even with the safety car. Not happen. It was not gonna happen. He still had to get ahead of Sainz, and well, it was very interesting how we got to the conclusion of this Grand Prix, all things considered. I was really expecting a, a hotter Grand Prix from from Perez. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. We'll see just how long Helmut Marco keeps him around. I suppose he has to until the end of next season, he's contracted. Anyway. Alright, rules and procedures were followed. The Scrum Prix, can you believe that? When an error now where rules and procedures get followed. Okay, they've always been followed. <laughs> Except in. Uh, AD 2021, I suppose. But this is good. This is good because, well, that race was supposed to finish under safety car. There's been plenty of races that have finished under safety car. I believe it, Canadian Grand Prix in the early 2000s, or right, somewhere in that space, from the year 2K to 2K2. <laughs> I believe there was a Canadian Grand Prix somewhere there that finished under safety. It might have been the 99 Grand Prix, but I don't believe so. It must be the 2001. Anyway, all right, that's that's the first one that comes to my mind. There's been others, but that's the first Grand Prix finishing on the safety car that comes to my mind. And I believe perhaps one of Sebastian Vettel's um, World Championship wins was was sealed on the safety car. All right. Anyway, we had the film before. There's some new fans that, that needed to 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 get the film All right so they now have their form and they've committed it to memory and that, that and that's how it's supposed to be run <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be run the only issue i have all right this is like my main issue with abu dhabi even is that even burnt mylander was in on it if we're actually being real about it because burn the way he you know he was <laughs> he was vimming it at Monza, oh my goodness. He went through the Lesmos. Yeah, faster than he went down that 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 back straight at Abu Dhabi. On God. And let me not say on God and I'm gonna be blasphemous, but you know, on, on my own soul, I'll even say on my own damn soul. Go watch the film. He went faster through the Lesmos at Monza and he went down the straight. At Abu Dhabi 2021, go go watch that. It was <laughs> go go dare to compare if you've got the full. <laughs> and that that for me is like the real smoking gun. All right, that's the smoking gun for me. I don't know how they got Brent Mylander in on it, but otherwise, here in Monza, whoo, safety car is driving to Delta to pace. He was driving the wheels off that thing. 
You're not trying to get those laps through as fast as possible. I see you. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Moving on from that. Um, the Tifosi started booing Verstappen at the end. Of the and why are the Tifosi booing Verstappen? Well, the Tifosi are booing Verstappen because... Uh, They've cottoned on that it's that that it's the Verstappen parade. They've just cottoned on, and well, I don't know who who the architects of this whole uh, of this whole F1 schematic are, but uh, yeah, that type of selection process it's not going to fly by the Tifosi. It's, it's, it's just it's simply not going to fly. And they'll start talking loud when <laughs> they'll start talking loud when uh, I say when they'll start talking louder if one of their guys has a championship stolen from him the same way so Lewis Hamilton had a championship stolen from him in Abu Dhabi. They'll start talking very loud. The Tafosi. And the Tafosi are scary. Men don't understand. The Orange Army was not was not present. At Monza, I spotted two, maybe three, three men in orange. They could have just been McLaren fans, for all I know. <laughs> it really could have just been McLaren. There was no orange army. Very fascinating. I didn't expect. I thought they would have booked like a whole stand. Maybe they just couldn't. But maybe the Tifosi just booked the whole place. It's booked, you know, ten years in advance. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? You'll probably see. The, an orange army stand pop up what next season or in two seasons time is what it is but very interesting to me just that there was no orange army presence and well the Tifosi didn't care for decorum as a result of that <laughs> oh, the, they didn't care for decorum they said oh now the film is in this Grand Prix could end on the safety car but that one couldn't our guy has to lose out. Okay, <laughs> okay. And now they—they're also they—they—they're they're, they're not they're not fans of Verstappen, all right. And you, you know, these things they pile up. The media they play into. I shouldn't say the media. It's more like the apparatus, in, in general. But the apparatus they play interesting games. Anytime something good happens for Maximilian, they've got Callum popping up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> with an emote. It's a very interesting game they're playing. But otherwise, these things they, they they really don't work. Signaling like that, it just doesn't work. It might even rile some people up, maybe it riled the Tifosi up. Anyway. Anyway, there was no orange army in Monza. The Tifosi let off flares, just a handful. I only saw like four flares then being like optimistic with the four flares, it was more like three flares and <laughs> realistically two. And yeah, they were very mild mannered until until those post race interviews. All right, they actually cut off the crowd noise on my feed. <laughs> they actually cut the thing off. They said, no crowd noise. It's done. <laughs> Mute the thing, because when Charles he started chiming off in Italian was crickets could you believe the italians would just have crickets for a ferrari driver going off on a tap so anyway <laughs> anyway very interesting things coming out of this grand prix none of them directly related to the racing i like that the tifosi is losing patience with um the verstappen parade but otherwise you know this is just how it goes but it, you know them losing patience is just like cementing for me that this guy is is 100 percent dirty champion of 2021 he'll have a legitimate championship this season but he's not actually a favorite outside of his countrymen really he's just not and all these other guys who are not dutch but they they, they like verstappen right now what your WTF ones and you know, I shouldn't name names, but men like this, yeah, they'll they'll change tag very quickly when it's 
Charles Leclerc when, right? But they'll change tack very quickly when it's a Charles Leclerc or a George Russell who's leading the pack for championship. They'll change tack very quickly. And then the Maximilian Verstappen fans will be in a ruckus about, oh, look at the downplaying, they're downplaying our guy. Well, <laughs> your guy, your guy anyway. Let, let, me, let me stop talking right there. All right, Tracing Martin have a new rear wing concept for their low downforce uh, spec, and uh, I'm, I'm really not convinced by it. I think they should just drop it. I, this is like going to be the shortest note ever. I'm really not convinced. It would have been interesting if they ran it with a little more wing angle at Monza, I suppose, if they were able to put more wing on it and the wing still performs like a super high downforce. Uh, a super high down for like a super low down for spec ring while still providing enough rear stability that would have been something that would have been its own thing but as is the car looked so leery even in qualifying i mean you should have just given them boys a proper rear wing to work with right that was that was like a very foolish um upgrade well i suppose teams get fruity some years here and there with uh, some Monza spec wings. I might fish out um, Williams um, 1997 uh, prototype uh, rear wing. It was very interesting. They were going to run a rear wing that looked like um, an IndyCar rear wing around like Indianapolis. I, well, I suppose it was mostly oval circuits for IndyCar back in the day. I suppose it was champ car as well back then. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, they were they were looking to run something that could be run on ovals. Williams in '97. I'll, I'll get a pick for it. I should just get a pick for it. And uh, that kind of has that same flavor about it. This Aston Martin uh, skinniest rear wing. It's not even a skinny rear wing. It's the skinniest. Uh, that's the skinniest rear wing you could possibly like put on the car in in, in in the spec of the current regulation so you know i don't believe it will have enough efficacy for other teams to adopt it for next season at monza it just it just it just didn't look drivable quite frankly but otherwise the technical directives after three circuits this should be the last notes here i suppose the last observations so yeah this is top three centric there are other teams that this affects but it's, it's not you know this is, this is not really what people are actually watching for at a grand prix and that, that's that's just too much fucking work anyway the technical directors after three circuits what do we have um this is a, 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 a worthwhile um, time to note this because we've had a, a low speed circuit with Zandvoort, a, a medium speed circuit with Spa and a high speed circuit with with Mons. Right. Someone might argue that Spa is pretty high speed like in the context of F1 tracks because you know Zandvoort the cars are at Zandvoort the cars are, are pulling up trees so you know it's all relative at the end of the day so We've got the data in for medium speed, high speed, low speed. Is there money to be made on betting on Maximilian winning at, at some of these future cameras? Uh, I think it's like illegal. I think it's like irresponsible to be letting such easy bets happen. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, medium speed circuits. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be Red Bull domination. Right, especially at the medium speed circuits with the context of the technical directives and how they play out especially any any circuits that have like difficult pieces I shouldn't even say difficult but the real the real word is like serious pieces of racetrack right like so circuit of the Americas there's some serious pieces of racetrack there I said in previous observations that I was expecting Ferrari to perhaps have a strong challenge at Circuit of the Americas and I, I probably rescind that now I'm actually not expecting them to be good at Circuit of the Americas 
<laughs> not expect if they are good it'll it'll be a surprise to me a pleasant surprise but i'm really not expecting i'm expecting red bull i'm expecting Perez to finish second i mean this is how we should grade the car now this Perry is going to finish on the podium and we're on the podium right so i'm expecting Perez to finish second that any medium speed circuits that come and that that means the red bull is outright dominating right there is no car that can touch it on the circuit <laughs> but at medium speed circuits Merck could possibly challenge for podiums and attempt to get ahead of Ferrari, right? They'll be battling for third, at least as far as I see it. It's not actually going to happen this way because Perez might underperform here or there. It's going to underperform anyway. And Maximilian, you know, you might get unlucky in the Grand Prix, have some damage to the car or something like, like what happened at Silverstone, right? So things could happen to offset any of these expected outcomes. When you go to high speed circuits, realistically, no one should be able to challenge Red Bull, realistically. All right, now Perez, his strategy has perhaps been, um, well, his race has been complicated by having a, a compromised strategy on account of whatever happened with his brakes. But the, the, the way the standards are run, like, <laughs> You, you gotta be pulling out a podium even with the complications to your Grand Prix, so it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't even be a factor. But at a high speed circuit, I'm expecting Red Bull to win with no one really able to challenge. If Perez didn't have penalties and ran a clean Grand Prix, then I'm pretty sure he would have gotten either second or third at Monza. But otherwise, otherwise, it's not like there's uh, many high speed circuits going on. There's, Mexico and that should really be it and it's not really a high-speed circuit it just has an outlier piece of track but anyway it's not really a lot of circuits that that match up with Monza in terms of being analogous to to Monza but anyway anyway it's not like Spa right where a lot of circuits can essentially be considered a condensed Spa right it's not it's not like Spa, so medium speed where Red Bull were dominating at Spa and they're not going to be like 1.5 seconds faster at other medium speed. They'll be faster, we'll see how much faster, but it's not going to be 1.5 seconds, that's just because Spa is the fucking long circuit, All right? especially relative to the calendar. I mean Red Bull might be lapping, like I said, said before, they might be lapping something like seven or eight seconds lap faster if you put the cars on the notch life and you have them turn wheels in anger right anyway anyway and after that we've got low speed circuits now there's not going to be many low speed circuits at all <laughs> at all we've got singapore coming up but after that yeah it's a, there's no loads there, there are no low speed circuits i'm not sure if um yes marina Abu Dhabi counts as a low speed circuit. I believe there should be a medium speed circuit, especially with the track alterations that were made there. So, that to me will not be counting as a low speed circuit. And the Circuit of the Americas, medium speed, and it's got difficult pieces. It's got it's got serious track anyway. So, <laughs> it's its own. It is it is it, it is its own challenge. So yeah, Singapore. Right, the last low speed circuit on the calendar. I mean, you can expect a Red Bull win, but you know, anyone who gets their setup right on on the weekend can realistically challenge them. All right, they can put enough heat on them for them to, uh, you know, kick the shadow wall into gear. But anyway, we move away from that. But yeah. At, Low speed circuits, the last low speed circuit coming up, Singapore. The Red Bull can be challenged there. It will be interesting to see who can put up a challenge, be it Mercedes or Ferrari or... Heck, maybe Alpine, who knows? <laughs> who knows? One more round of the... Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I should end the observations there. I'm going to talk loose just now. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the technical directives after three circuits. We've got 
power three um, category of circuit, high speed, medium speed, and low speed. And Red Bull have performed exceptionally well at all three, and um, they've been outlier. They've been the outlier at that medium speed circuits, right? High speed circuits, Paris should have done much better at Monza, but otherwise, otherwise, I'm sure his finish can fuel some more narratives going forward around just the Red Bull car. <laughs> Otherwise, that's the vid. Yeah, peace. Hey, old Breezy. Let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing that thing over there. Hey, hey. Let's go! Cause I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away. Better know that I don't and I won't ever stop. Cause you know I gotta win every day, day. Go. She really, really wanna pop me. Go. Just know that you will never pop me. Go. And I know that I gotta be a little cocky. Go. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come, a nigga gotta set it, then I gotta go and then I gotta get it, then I gotta blow and then I gotta shut it. Any little thing a nigga think that he be doing, cause it doesn't matter, cause I'm gonna dead it, dead it. Then I'm gonna murder everything and anything about a boom about a thing. I gotta do a lot of things to make it clearer to a couple niggas that I always win and then I gotta get it again and again and again. And again. And I be doing it to death, and now I move a little foul, I nigga better call a rap, and everybody know my style, I niggas know that I'm the best when it come to doing this, and I be banging on my chest, and I bang in the east, and I bang in the west, and I come to give you more, and I will never give you less, you will hear it in the street, and you can read it in the press, do you really wanna know what's next? Let's go! See the way we on it, and we all up in the race, and you know we got it, gonna try to keep up with the pace, and we struggling, and hustling, and set it, and I get it, and we all gotta do it, take it to another place, gotta taste it, and I gotta grab it, and I gotta cut all through this traffic, just to be at the top of the throne, but I know I gotta help.